I am Robin Jan Storm, and this is What is USD? The basics of Pixar's 3D file format in 15 minutes. So let's just jump right into a USD file. This is one. So we've loaded a USD file, and we see this car. Uh, this is the, the stage, the final 3D representation of that USD file. And we have a hierarchy of that USD file. So this can be really big or really small. It entirely depends on the USD file. This one could be quite big once you expand everything. We have all these things in the hierarchy. Now each line is called a prim, and they can have these types like scope, material, X form, mesh, uh, shader, and all these things together create that 3D result that we see on the right. Uh, now there's a lot of things that we can do with the USD file. This is just a very small basic use case. Um, so we have all these different things in this hierarchy and all these different prims have data in them. There's all this data that they have and we can do things with that data. Um, for example, um, this particular sedan or these vehicles rather, I can change it to a different vehicle like a, an ambulance. So this is the exact same USD file, but now it is referencing different USD files using a variant system. So we can change sort of like what this particular USD file is referencing at the final endpoint that it's being shown in a 3D view. Um, so there's a lot of more other data in here. We can also change the wheels individually if we'd like. So there's like a lot of things we can do with USD. This is just a, a basic example of it. But what does this look like on like disk? Looks like this. So we have this uh, Houdini file that I've used to create this uh, these USD files and a bunch of folders. Let's start out with the uh, textures folder. So we have a global textures, just some colors in there. And then we have above that a, a global colors folder with just a bunch of simple colors in there that I can just use for a basic example. Go on up higher, we go to the max file. So it's just a single 3ds max file here, the original assets. And then there's these materials, which are also USD files. Now, the cool thing is with the USD, you can save it as a USDA and then open it up and see text. You can actually type into this and make changes and actually type out a USD file if you wanted to. So we can see that it has a material and a shader and it's linking to the red JPEG. So this is the red material. All right, cool. Then we have for the assets here, we have wheels, all different kind of the wheel variations. And I have vehicles here. Uh, the vehicle variance USDA is the one that we recently saw in 3D just now. And it's basically just referencing all these other USD files. So it's referencing this van. So, all right, let's take a look at this van. So let's open up the van, go to the asset here, and we can see the van full asset. So open that up, and we can see that it is referencing a van body asset. Okay. Uh, it's also referencing wheel one, wheel two, wheel three. Okay, so it's referencing these wheels and then placing them, it's transforming them in space to the right location where a wheel should be. Let's open up the body. It's again referencing a van geo now, so it's a different reference, but it's referencing again. It's also binding some materials together. Uh, where is it getting those materials from? Okay, we see it's referencing all these material files to so then bind them together onto the geometry. All right, so what is that? Van Geo file look like? Okay, so here we have the actual geometry of that particular van. We see all these triangles, all these transforms, we see all these things happening. Like this is the actual file of the geometry of the van. And this can be a quite a big file. We can make this again as big as as small as we'd like, but this contains a lot of triangle data, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger. All right, cool. Uh, so that's basically what a, a USD file looks like on disk. Like we have all these USD files and they're referencing each other, linking to each other, and you can open up one, each one individually in 3D or uh, if you're saving them as USDA in a text editor. That was probably still a little bit confusing though because there is a lot going on with USD. So let's go through it in a little bit more of a visual way by showing how these files interact with each other. We have this USD wheel geometry file and we have this USD material file. They're somewhere on disk. Maybe they're on a server somewhere. Doesn't really matter. Could be anywhere, really. And then we're referencing them together into this USD wheel asset file. We have a textured wheel. Then we have a USD car geometry file. And we're referencing that together with the USD material file. Could be the same material. Could be a different one. Doesn't really matter. Again, could be as simple or as complex as we'd like. 
but we're referencing that together into a car asset file. Then we have the final car file, the actual, you know, car with the four wheels one, which means that we need to reference in the car asset, the, you know, the textured car, and the wheel, not once, not twice. No, we need to reference that in four times. We're referencing in four wheels. We could also do it once with some other USD tricks, but for now, let's keep it simple. We're referencing in it four times. So really what this looks like is like this. We have a wheel with the material added, it becomes a textured wheel. We have this bodice of the car and with the texture added, it becomes this textured bodice. And then together, it becomes this car with the four wheels. Now it's important to note here that if I change any of these files, those changes are reflected because all these files are referencing each other. So if I change the wheel, for example, then the final result also changes. And that's really a really big power of USD is that all these files are talking to each other. Because each of these files is a separate file. Like this is a separate file, 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 and this is a separate file. Even the material is a separate file. So each of these separate files can be opened separately and edited separately. So someone could be using that, you know, that bottom fully created car and place it in a larger scene somewhere that is also referencing it. And at the same time, someone could be opening up the uh, car geometry and edit it in 3ds Max or Maya or Houdini and do things with it. And then when they all save their files, it's all automatically reflected to each other. So that's really powerful with USD. So when you use USD in the full pipeline, the idea is that if you have Houdini, Maya, 3ds Max, Blender, Unreal, or your engine, whatever third-party in-house thing you're using, that if you could use USD, in all these editors. And right now it's not quite there yet. And a lot of these editors you can, but it's not really completely up to the feature set of USD. But you can also save to that USD file. So that single USD file or all those USD files that you have can be opened up and edited in all these DCCs. And then also moved between these different DCCs because if they're all using USD, you can move between all these DCCs with the exact same file and maintain all the data that you have within that USD file. So you just keep on moving between them and this one USD file is always the source of truth. There's always this USD file, you can open it up and all these different things and edit it. That's really the cool power of USD that I hope to see realized and I also see a lot of people fighting for and trying to make happen. It's, it's gonna take more time, but that's sort of generally a really good and cool idea. Now going into a little bit more of the basics of what is USD? Well, it's, it's a 3D file format really an API, but thinking about it as a 3D file format, it's a little bit easier. It stands for Universal Scene Description, so USD. Um, it was made and released by Pixar, uh, you know, the makers of Toy Story, The Incredibles, Cars, Finding Nemo, etc. Uh, it's They made it open source in 2016. It's been used in really big movie productions like Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Birds of Prey. Like it's, it is being used right now in the things that you watch uh, you might not know it, but USD is being used. It is also filled with really hard to understand nomenclature, basically the names of things. Um, I might have named some things already like variants or links or references, and you're kind of thinking, what does that mean? What is a prim? It is confusing, especially when you read the documentation. It's very technical right now. Um, and I think a big reason for that is because the tools are trying to catch up. Um, USD was released as a file format, really cool. No tooling was released with USD. So all the tools out there still need to make it so that USD is easy to use within their tools. Right now it isn't, um, it's just a little bit difficult, uh, but they're trying to get there. Everyone's really trying to get to that point of making USD easy to use. There's also been a lot of really cool USD content released like the Moana set by Disney. Like you can download this and open it up. It's really cool to take a look at. And there's the ALAP scene by Animal Logic, which again, you can just download and take a look at. It's really neat. You know, they have animations and stuff like that. It's a big, complex scene. Though when I'm saying open it up, depending on the DCC, it might not load entirely correctly. Things might be missing. It might look a little strange because the tooling is still not entirely used to USD. But you know, these big studios have built these things in USD and that's really, really cool. And also Remedy, uh, the game developer, is making their editor use USD. Uh, they're being super public about this. It's so cool to see, because um, as you can probably notice so far, 
movies and you know offline rendering is using usd a lot and that's cool but real-time rendering hasn't really been done that much with usd yet um so remedy is doing that and it's really really cool to see um but you can also notice in their presentations that there's a lot of technical jargon a lot of technical stuff going on and it might make you think like oh usd is just for technical folks you know as an artist i don't want to touch this stuff and that's not really correct. Uh, like right now it is really technical, but that's mostly just because everyone's trying to make their tooling work with this. There's so many things to try and figure out on how to make this work in a good way with the tooling because USD itself is really cool, really neat. It has so many features that you can't even fit into like a few hour long videos. Like there's so much stuff out there that you can do with USD that's really cool. It's just really hard to make work right now with tooling. Uh, you're gonna have to make good workflows with this. Um, so yeah, but actually using it, there's so many cool things you do. And once it does work, it's actually quite easy to use and cool and nice to use. There's a lot of like really powerful things you can do with it as an artist. I wrote more about USD myself as well on uh, my blog post, uh, my articles over here, which you can uh, read. Uh, there's a link in the description below where you can read a little bit more about USD and some more explanations of what some of the names mean. And also there's the book of USD by Remedy. Uh, there's also a link in the description below. I think it's really cool. They made a really much more easier explainer for a lot of the USD terminology, the nomenclature that's difficult to understand and they made it much easier to understand with clear GIFs and images, for example. So I think it's really cool. And yeah, please let me know what you think of this video and if this was helpful. Um, I'd like to iterate this down to like the perfect 10 minutes because right now, if you look up USD videos, there's you know a lot of really long videos and big documentations to read and it's like i don't think it's it doesn't make usd very inviting for artists even though it can be really, really powerful so i want to iterate this down to the perfect 10 minutes to really have an easy way of like hey you want to know about usd watch this one video and you get a general idea about what this is like uh, also, I want to release another USD video when I get back from GDC. I want to release this content that you saw too of the uh, cars. Uh, that's from uh, Kenny. Uh, Kenny made those uh, vehicles, Kenny and L. Uh, he released those vehicles as CZ0, uh, so a Creative Commons Zero. And uh, I've edited them into a USD format to be able to uh, show this. So thank you, Kenny, for those assets. It's really nice to be able to uh, use them as an example. And also, if you're at GDC, come visit the Tool Design Roundtables uh, on Wednesday and Thursday at GDC. Um, we're going to be talking about tool design and the usability of tools and workflows of tools. And I hope to also hear people talk there about USD and how we're going to make USD work in all these tool systems. Because if we have this file format that is open source, that everyone can edit and you know shape into the right way that they want, and it can work between all these different DCCs, Boy, is that going to improve workflows. I think it'll be really powerful and cool. It's just going to take a little bit to get there. So let's, let's have those conversations. All right. Thank you. I uh, hope this helped.